Hello everybody, Adrian Plass here. Yes, and Bridget, hello. And it's number 145 in Sounding the Jolly Old Shallows. <laughs> it is, yeah. Well, the, it's all right, a lot of water around in the shallows. There's been a lot of water around in the north of England. There I has, but although the in the UK. rest of the UK apparently there's a shortage of water. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> well, perhaps they could have a bit of ours. So we're, no, no, we've only had it recently, but it's just what, you know, this is so typical, isn't it? All the spring flowers start coming up and you think, oh, it's so beautiful, and then you go out in the morning and half your daffodils are flat on the ground. Um, but anyway, that's March. You love your daffodils, don't you? I do, and I get very upset when they get knocked down. and um, Which is interesting because I know somebody else who loves gardening, who writes to us sometimes, and she responded to what you said last week. Cause yeah, you, I said, said well, I, I said about, you know, maybe there's a locked door in us and there are things we always wish we'd do. Yeah. And I said, actually, maybe there's more than one. Maybe writing, gardening, and telling people about God. Yes, and and, she's and then you said... Well, I said I thought that was a rather funny combination. And she said, well, it may be a funny combination, but she doesn't really think so because writing, gardening and telling people about God touch her. They're her favorite things. So well, that's I, stand, great. <laughs> I stand something or other. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've had quite a lot of communications. Uh, another friend uh, who we've known for a long time, actually, um, but never actually met. Uh, sent, sent a message. Actually, he was repeating a story he told a while ago. Mm, but just a minute, um, this was to do with you talking about unwise encouragement. Oh, that's it? right. I said that yeah. some people have the gift of <laughs> unwise encouragement. And he was my, reminding me about a, um, a friend of his who was in a, a Bible study. He said he had a somewhat eccentric faith, I yeah, think he said. Yeah, he did. And um, once in, in a Bible study, they were talking about the gifts of the Spirit. And this friend spoke up and said, I believe I have the gift of encouragement. And another person who was in the same group said, what gift do you think I have? And the eccentric one replied, I don't think you have one. <laughs> <laughs> Which uh, rather rather spoiled the, the impact of his, uh, his announcement encouragement. that he had a... a <laughs> A gift of encouragement. Gift of well, there encouragement. we are. There we are. I'll tell you what I loved in that email. I loved the expression eccentric faith. You know, sometimes I think we we don't really allow in the people with eccentric faiths, you know, who who don't quite toe the party line, although this maybe was a little bit extreme. But he was clearly very much part of the family of believers and also very honest. Yeah. Well, I, I'm afraid if, if eccentric people are not allowed in, I haven't got a lot of no. hope, really. So there we are. No. And there was another email, uh, also from Australia, actually, which the first one was talking about talking about how easy it is to write the words but not necessarily back that up with the actions and she was talking actually about some scheme that's caused enormous grief mm. to a lot of people um, to a point of people rather a lot of people being affected and rather a lot of people becoming suicidal and one of the people involved in that one of the people responsible yeah, for write, this, yeah. writing a book that was to yeah. do with following in the steps follow of Jesus, Jesus. Yeah. yeah so uh, probably that book was full of the right words but if, if the words lose and we've, we've talked about this before if they lose their value and weight then they become useless don't yeah. they they don't mean yeah. anything yeah i was thinking you know, uh, in schools now, where I don't know if it applies to other places, but certainly in the UK, kids are moved out of mainstream school into what's called, what is now called an inclusion unit. And it used to be called an exclusion unit because they've mm. been excluded from school. But obviously, the aim was to think in terms of getting them back into school. Mm. I just wondered how the kids in the newly named inclusion mm. unit feel about it yeah i think i i think it's myself i'm really pleased it's happened because it means that teachers and parents and people generally mm. now know that it's a positive thing yes that's so true. you're not kicking them out um you're you're making it possible for people who need some help to get the help needed to put them yeah. into back into where they yeah. need to be yeah 
but um, obviously yes there's also the <laughs> danger that people say well you know it was good when they were kicked out but well, that's not what we're after no, is it? No but I just think that the kids will still feel excluded but what do you do with that? I don't mm, know I just I don't know. putting labels on things doesn't automatically change what's happening I mean in the good inclusion units there must be loads of work to yeah. get kids back into school in the ones that as you say are quite glad they've been excluded yeah. um, I don't know but I was thinking I mean Putin's war is a fairly good example isn't it you mean special his special military uh, operation operation yeah, yeah. yes I mean yeah. putting different words on it doesn't alter the one where he is. lined them up on the border and said there isn't going to be an invasion <sighs> yes yeah, exactly. That one, yeah. Yeah, that's, exactly that's a good example um, yeah and um, what we've, we've talked about this a lot in the past I mean in one of my books there's a a whole section called pulpy words um, which is about the words we commonly use in the church and they're great words well they're all they're all very meaningful i mean i've got a list of 10 of them here i'll read them very quickly um grace love obedience faith truth hope courage reverence humility and peace yeah but uh, you'll see how incredibly flexible these terms can be if you look at this here's here's a sentence which uses four of the four of those words. Okay, if we plant the seeds of grace, grace in the good yeah. soil of love and water them with the fresh rain of obedience, we shall eventually reap the rich harvest of faith. Brilliant, isn't it? What a wonderful thing to have put together. However, the problem is if you then rearrange the words <laughs> and use exactly the same words in a different order, this is what you get. If we plant the seeds of faith instead of grace mm -hmm, yeah. in the good soil of obedience and water them with the fresh rain of love, we shall eventually reap the rich harvest of guess what? Grace. So you see, I mean it all sounds so convincing. If you only hear one of them, you might have a Bible study on that subject. I know. But here's here's the, the thing that is really weird. You can use all ten. Come on. Right. Then. Here's all ten. <laughs> and listen to this, this will change your lives on a deep level. When grace and love are confirmed by obedience, we find that faith embraces truth, thus allowing hope and courage to develop the reverence that leads to humility and will finally achieve peace. And you can turn them round. Well, you can reverse that entirely. <laughs> Here it is. When peace and humility are confirmed by reverence, we find that courage embraces hope, thus allowing truth and faith to develop the obedience that leads to love and will finally achieve grace. Mm. So there we are. I mean, the words are the, the essence of what is central to our faith, aren't they? Grace and love and obedience, faith, truth, hope, courage, reverence, humility mm. and peace. But where where they're not backed up? Yeah, no, it means not. It means nothing if it doesn't mean anything. Mm. And a lot of the the things that do happen, not just in the church but elsewhere, is about changing labels mm. and hoping that the substance changes because mm. the label has changed. Mm. And that really takes some looking mm. at. I think. Mm. I mean, we've talked just recently, haven't we, about the po the importance of positive messaging because we've been talking about the two commandments that mm. Jesus turned the whole of the law into I mean and what is interesting is that he never said the law was wrong but what he was talking about when he talked about the Pharisees he said the Pharisees and teachers of the law are experts in the law of Moses so obey everything they teach you but and here it is mm. don't do as they do, yeah. after all, let's just they hear that say again. one thing no, and listen, do something else. Let's just listen else. to that again. I mean, so obey everything they teach you, but don't do as they do. Exactly. That's really interesting. After all, they say one thing and do something else. And yeah. then, this is one of the things that's a bit later on in that, you know, send shivers down me. You Pharisees and teachers of the law of Moses are in for trouble. You're nothing but show-offs. You lock people out of the kingdom of heaven that is a very severe yeah. statement you it? won't go in yourselves yeah. and you keep others from going in mm. you neglect the more important matter you do all the right things you give god a tenth of the spices from your garden such mm. as mint dill and cumin <laughs> quite know what god's going to do with them other than yeah. make a nice curry but um and yet you neglect the more important matters of the law such as justice, mercy, and faithfulness. And then mm. in the same passage, outside you look good, 
inside you're evil and you only pretend to be good mm. we talked about this before didn't we about mm. the Jesus bringing the whole of the law into two positive uh, not easy but positive mm. things mm. which was love God mm. and love your neighbour mm. uh, mm. and out of those that positive approach the negatives are kind of uh, yeah occur because of that because yeah, you're motivated yeah. and by without that. even putting labels on it maybe you'll be doing some of those things but I wonder I wonder how far if you're talking about inclusivity oh. you ought to go and I know you wrote this for your favorite banana hater didn't you I do I, I <laughs> I'm beginning to love my banana chief banana hater and uh, uh, she, I think she's beginning to sense that. There's something about her that is really appeals to me. Okie um, doke. Here we go. So this this is um, this is a whole thing. This is an interview um, with someone who has a, a very well, positive attitude. Well, you are. I mean, how can I put it? You are a fiercely committed banana supporter. That's correct, isn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. I campaign tirelessly on behalf of bananas. Mm -hmm. I have even changed my birth name uh, to publicly demonstrate my allegiance to the fruit. Oh, that's interesting. So your name is? John. John? Well, that doesn't sound terribly fruity. Uh, John Peel. Oh, right. And you actually help to run a banana organisation, don't you? Yes, that is correct. At present, there is just a small bunch of us. Um, we are all members of Can Poop. Can Poop? Can Poop, yes. Yeah. C-A-N-P-O-O-U-P. Can Poop. Um, yes, we are the Christians against non-consensual peeling of unripe plantains. We meet Gosh. to discuss issues and offer mutual support and enjoy um, appropriate music, that sort of thing. Oh, right. Well, <clears throat> that's very interesting. Um, what kind of music? Um, Bananarama goes down well. Mm -hmm. We also greatly enjoy the work of um, the artist called Fruit Loaf. Fruit Loaf? Yes. Don't, don't you mean Meat Loaf? No, Fruit Loaf. Okay, favourite track? Uh, well, I in very much enjoy listening to the track entitled um, I Would Chew Anything for Lunch, But I Won't Chew That. And in the song, as a matter of interest, what is it that Fruit Loaf won't chew? Fruit Loaf would never contemplate the consumption of banana flesh in any form. Okay, um, serious question. Bananas. Now, they do go through it, don't they? Yes, yes they do. Um, I have myself, for instance, counselled uh, a number of young bananas who... Uh, really did not enjoy junior school. Oh, was there any particular reason? It was to do with the sports, really. Yes. Um, well, they were very rarely picked. Oh, I see. But there are more serious issues. Mm. Uh, we at Can Poop have now opened a safe refuge for bananas who have suffered abuse. Good heavens. In what way have they suffered abuse? I'm afraid to say mm -hmm. some have been battered. <gasps> Tragically, as a result, their lives are really, I have to say, frittered away. A oh. few have been stalked. <gasps> I have known stalked bananas mm -hmm. who were frightened out of their... Skins? Yes, yes, out of their skins. And others might be undergoing a crisis of identity. And your refuge can help. In what way does it help? We will never judge a banana. Oh, be they straight, be they bent, be they stale, mm. all are welcome. For each banana is as God created him or her or it or they. Mm. Right. Well, just another question. Coincidentally, I actually recently met a lady banana who expressed a deep hatred of her own kind. Now, what would you want to say to her? This is very sad. Mm. I would gently ask, mm. did you ever encounter a predatory banana mm -hmm. at some point in your life? Mm. Um, that is what we in Can Poop mm. call a rogue banana. Oh. Possibly you had a crush on a narcissistic banana. Oh my goodness. It happens. 
Such relationships commonly result in the formation of a very, very lumpy custard. Oh, so you're advising that she shouldn't give up. Oh, no, no. Rotten bananas do exist. We know that. We all know that. But somewhere out there, I feel sure that one day the person you speak of will find Mr. Ripe? Exactly. And hopefully he will serenade her with another Campoop favourite. They call me Mellow Yellow. <laughs> I don't know, Adrian. You really do have a very odd mind. <laughs> Well, it's all very well saying that, but for bananas who suffer, <laughs> and I would say to the person who knows I'm speaking to her now, that, you know, you can't neglect this fruit. You really can't. Mm. We've been thinking, haven't we, Adrian, on a totally different sort of a, a level about Paul and about something that he said um, about... Is it about inclusivity? Or it's certainly about the fact that he felt secure enough in himself to feel that that he could go anywhere, be anything. Yeah. Um, I mean, I. Well, what it's were based the based words? really it's said, based really on the fact he said, "I I I am prepared to become anything with anyone uh, if it oh, means do all things for all yeah, men. If yes, it means I right. can win someone for Christ." Yeah, that was yeah. a, said. So yeah, um, and I think. With Jesus, it's the same that every person and every situation that we know about, and there must have been hundreds more we don't know about, he would become what he needed to be for that time. Mm. But Paul was, I mean, some of the things he said are that I will, I will be under the law if I'm with someone who is under the law, mm. and I will be out of the law with someone who. Mm. He, I, I guess, what he was talking about was he would meet people where they are. Mm. not where they're supposed to be mm. in order to help them to where mm. they needed to be. Mm. Whereas mm. a lot of stuff um, is a sort of downward trajectory from mm. where we are, which we suppose is all mm. right, mm. to those who are not in the right place. Yes, I Don't mean, I remember like years ago, Adrian, I was working, if you remember, in a school for girls. It was a, a sort of approved school, really. And um, because I was pregnant at the time, I actually had a very easy ride um i suppose you know they were they wanted to know all about the baby these these girls they were extremely difficult and they knew that we were christians because we were doing a little tv um epilogue style program weren't we um and they were quite excited at the idea we might mention them so that was all fine i then had our chi our little girl and when I went back as a supply teacher, I find the whole attitude to the fact that I was a Christian had changed, both with the staff and with the kids. Mm. I don't know if you remember, but it was because somebody had gone in um, and was only there for two weeks because she felt that the swearing and the attitude offended the temple of the Holy Spirit within her. I found that very heartbreaking at the time. And it really made me think. That was you know, that was if, a rationalisation of fear. Yes, really, it was a rationalisation of fear. I'm not knocking yeah, her at all. Yeah. All I'm so, well, no, no, because we know right. what it's like. Yeah, no, I. We but know I what think it's it right. also yeah. was a genuine feeling that it was besmirching her, and she therefore couldn't go down that road mm. to be all things to all yeah. men or all things to all yeah. disturbed and difficult delinquent girls. Yeah. It, it, the challenges, we, you know, we read these things in Paul about mm. the fact he does all these things without really thinking just what was the challenge for him every yeah. single time that he had to hold on to his faith yeah. but go as far as he possibly could. And they sell of Jesus, didn't they? He drinks with wine bibbers and he mixes they with did. prostitutes. And um, and Paul, they said all sorts of thing, things about But yes, he, he was... I suppose it, is it, it must be something to do with ego, I suppose, that you don't need to appear to be anything. You just want to bring what is needed for whoever you encounter. So what you mean is it, it's about ego or it's about not... I, I, I think it's about ego not affecting yeah, your that's, decisions yeah. about yeah. How, yeah. You, how you deal with yeah. situations. I don't yeah. know. It's, it's not easy. I mean, I feel for that... that lady who left for that reason but mm. actually all that all that those girls would have remembered 
Well, well it was the teachers, was, to yeah, be honest, well, more. That's right, yeah, well, the teachers, um, yeah, well, I mean, they had a very they, negative view. It was a things, very yeah. negative view, and it was, it reinforced the idea that um, Christians just want to stay in their ivory towers or whatever and don't get mm. bespurched, don't get mm. mucky. Um, and as you say, with Jesus, he got extremely tired, extremely worn out, and went a lot of extra miles for a lot of people. And so did Paul. I mean, the list of what Paul went through is extraordinary, isn't it? But the motive was yeah. to bring as many home as he possibly could. Yeah, and he, he was fierce about it. Yeah. Um, no doubt about it. Mm. He was fierce. Mm. I've, I've uh, more and more recently... <sighs> I get confused, you know. I mean, I like it in a way when I get confused because it usually means you have to sort something out and come mm -hmm. through to the other side. And I, it, it troubles me that that a, um, an, an attempt to become simple in the expression of faith can actually be harmful. You, using words that don't mean what they should mm -hmm. mean, mm -hmm. saying that things will happen when you can't be sure they'll happen. Mm -hmm. The great adventure is precisely what you said about Paul that he went to e whoever was there where they needed to be mm. with what they needed mm. and that's but really challenging the other side of that is he never wavered from what was important to him and that's the danger well, that's if you end up being trick, part of the mm. the foul jokes and part yeah. of the racism and part of the other things that you know yeah. as you try and and go down roads and be with people well we spoke the other day again, about so it's very tricky we spoke about digging through sand to the rock the other day yeah. and um the Within sand, you, uh, someone was talking about it on television, you know, you find quicksands. Oh, and gosh, they're yes. the places where you sink. Yeah. And it can easily happen. But, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Anyway, yes. Ah, we'd love to hear from you, as always. So um, we look forward to that and to speaking to you next week. Yeah. Thanks for being with us. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.